see it. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> Come on. Okay, next. Come on. <laughs> oh my god, Portuguese. Uh, hello there, hi girls and guys, my name is Roman Konvichov and today I bring to you a tutorial, a comprehensive tutorial on the Russian squat kick, finally. It's also called a Prisyatka. So Prisyatka is also known as a Slavic squat kick uh, or as a Slavic kick or as a Gopnik kick. Uh, whatever you decide to call this, this is a pretty cool looking move. So let's talk about this. So this move is very common in Russian dance and in Ukrainian dance as well. My tutorial is going to be from the perspective of a person who has learned it by himself. I have tried various uh, strategies on some of my students and uh, they have learned the Prisyatka. So there are uh, women who can do this trick uh, that I know personally. There are males who weigh over 100 kilos much heavier than me and probably some of you guys who can do this. So the point is that if you give this enough uh, time, if, if you train enough, if you develop flexibility and mobility, which actually turns out to be the most important factor, in my opinion, uh, in uh, performing this move, if you develop these qualities and if you develop basic leg strength uh, done with the full squat, you will be able to this move. So, the first position, the first prerequisite that you must have is good ankle and hip mobility. You should be able to sit like this, right, on the flat foot. I'm not off my heels, my heels are on the ground. You should be able to sit like this freely for a very long time. Just like this, this should be comfortable with feet together, with feet outwards, knee outwards, so this is your position, this is the first prerequisite, so master this first. Next step is to be able to have good hamstring flexibility, so your knees, your legs are flat on the ground, your knees are against the floor, and if you are, if you have just woken up or after exercise any time of the day, you should be able to freely and easily reach your toes in front of you. So, from the side view, just like this, and I reach. So this should be very easy. Uh, a benefit is if you can point forward and reach even further. After you've mastered those uh, basic uh, stretching things, uh, let me have a person demonstrate to you basic uh, lower body exercises that you should be good at. The first one is a squat. So, Sergey, another guy, oh, another another bold guy is going to show a squat. Let's see the squat. Go. Go lower. Lower, 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 lower. Okay, so, as you can see, he can go down very low and he can stay in that position. Now, do a couple of squats, just up and down. So, you should be able to do squats in a very uh, easy manner. Next, you should be able to do lunges. So, Sergey, lunges. Let's go. See, yep, continue. Oh, beautiful, fantastic. And then you should be able to do pistol squats. This is your next step. And try to switch feet. Oh, nice crack there. <laughs> okay, maybe two more. <laughs> okay, and one more. There you go. Спасибо. Все. Okay. So, these are your prerequisites. If you can do all of these things, you are officially allowed to actually try uh, Prisyatka. So, let's move on. So, first of all, thoroughly warm up and try the Prisyatka itself. If you can do at least two or three or four kicks consecutively, you're succeeding. Just keep trying, refine your technique and continue practicing. If you're failing uh, hopelessly, continue watching the video, I have some solutions for you.
if you're not failing hopelessly, just refine your technique by bringing your knees downwards, you will see right now. So you want to have your hips high and your knees preferably a bit lower than your hip level. So this is the position from which you should do your kicks. If your knees are higher than your hips, you will probably travel back and eventually fall back. <laughs> Step number two is very self-explanatory. Just try to point your toes forward. Here I wasn't pointing my toes 100%. Now this guy does not point his, point his toes at all. And uh, another example, here we have someone who points his toes very perfectly. By the way, this guy is in his 50s during the presiatka. So here a heavyweight student of mine is doing presiatka. He needs to point his toes a bit more and he needs to keep his body a bit more vertical. Chin up and uh, just look straight ahead. So Tanya, also a student of mine, is doing much better, but she's not pointing her toes and her body is traveling in the horizontal plane. This should not happen. So here I demonstrate to you the rigidity of the upper body. First few reps, ignore them, but the rest of them, you can see that my body is not moving this much. It's just moving slightly vertically, but it's upright and looking straight ahead. And a few more points, lastly, about the Fisiatka. When you do it, you always want to land your feet in almost the same place where you start from. So you don't want to go like here, 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 like this. You want your feet to land in the exact same place where you came from. That's the first step as well to a very successful Prisyatka. You want to be able to do, in order to master this move, to consider yourself to be able to do this move, you should be able to do 16 counts. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. If you succeeded with this many Prisyatkas, uh, you are officially doing the, the skill, you have officially mastered the skill, at least in my opinion. Uh, and a few other pointers to keep in mind when you do this. So your body position, when you do it, you should not be moving your arms like this on every repetition that you do, that you go with your feet, your hands should not be bouncing up and down. Your hands are rigid. Your shoulders are not elevated forwards like this. You're not in in this this position. So your elbows, again, your arms are stationary, and your traps and shoulders are down. So this is the position that you should have. Think about a retracted scapula when you do this. So this is bad. This is good. A retraction and depression. This is what your scapula should be doing at that point. Okay? Another good cue to think about is to have your chest up and to have your chin a bit high and looking straight ahead when you do this movement. So you might have retracted scapula, but your chest it should be up. So once again, chest down, chest up, hands. Chin. The world sees this little bitch do this fucking little brush like Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> that shit. That's sexy. Oh my god. Um, that's fucking hot. So if you can't even do one or two kicks and you're failing miserably, you're probably alcoholically intoxicated. 
or you don't have enough ankle mobility and flexibility, as well as hamstring mobility, flexibility, and uh, maybe lower back flexibility and uh, mobility. This is by far the most important reason why most people fail. For that, just watch my videos on how to get more flexible. I will link these videos uh, here in the video. So my advice to you is that if you realize that you're not uh, flexible enough, not mobile enough, just really take your time and effort uh, to develop those qualities. Trust me, they are the main reason why most people fail Prisyatka. You can try an alternative approach to learning the Prisyatka. You can break it down into more basic parts. So let's look at some of the things that you can do separately while you continue developing those uh, qualities of uh, mobility and flexibility. So, train just by doing the following movement. All I'm doing is I'm staying on my toes and rocking with my knees forward and back just to really feel balance. You can have your hands at the side first. You can have try to maintain straight back, but just try to get into this position. You can bounce around like this just very slightly. All you want to do is just get familiar with this position. Then you can go onto your heel all the way down and fixate this position over here. You can also point your toe. So this will develop lower body stability and strength. You can have your hands at the side for now. Switch foot and get into this position. Now look, I'm still just on my uh, on my full foot. I'm not on my toes when I'm doing this movement. After you get familiar with this, after you can stay like this for a long time, you can start doing other things like getting onto one toe and trying to hold balance like this. You will find that this is much, much more difficult. So here a student of mine is practicing holding balance. This is what it should look like. You can place your hands keep to the holding. side, but try to keep them together. Keep holding, keep holding. Keep holding, motherfucker. At the same time, train hopping with your feet together. And also, start by placing your hands for support near a wall or on chairs and kicking your legs consecutively outwards. You can also try kicking without jumping. All of these exercises will help you to become more familiar with how Prisyatka is performed while you, you develop your flexibility and mobility. Another recommendation if you're a beginner is to learn something much simpler. So this can be done by just kicking your feet separately uh, one after the other while having one or two hands on the ground for support. If you would like me to make some tutorials on easier Russian or folk dance moves, uh, please comment down below and I'll be happy to do so. These simpler moves are much less physically depending on your body, your knees, and they allow you to practice basic body positions, having your chest high, chin up, and in my opinion these moves look pretty badass as well. So after you learn the basic prisyatka, you can incorporate other elements like jumping onto one arm, you can do it slowly, or you can go, for example, faster, much faster, like uh, Taras is doing uh, right here. You may also check out uh, Virsky Ensemble of Ukraine. They are one of my favorite ensembles to watch, and they have some of the best prisyatkas uh, in the world, in my opinion. So again, there is uh, the possibilities are limitless, and there's many, many options. You can uh, improve and you can always get better. So just check this out. This is simply amazing, right? So in terms of training Prisyatka, I think you can train it safely uh, from anywhere from uh, one to two times per week or per two weeks. So that means going as low as uh, one time per two weeks. 
The reason for this is because Prisiatka is very demanding on your knees. So if you train it more frequently, like I did for a while, you will get fast progress, but at the same time, you will also uh, develop very bad knee problems and you won't be able to walk. Uh, so I couldn't walk at one point for one month because I was training like every single day, both to the wall. You do not want to do that. This is stupid. So if you're a younger individual, you can train it more frequently. If you're a bit older or if you don't have such good flexibility and mobility, I would suggest to train it a bit less. And remember, at the same time, uh, continue developing flexibility and mobility in your ankles, hamstrings and in your lower back. Develop basic strength through, through pistol squats and you will be able to do the prisiatka. You won't need to train it as much because you have all the basic physical qualities developed. So prisiatka will serve just as a test, as an expression of the physical qualities that you have acquired. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this tutorial has helped you out in one way or another. I tried to provide as much information as I know uh, in order to learn this cool dance move. And if you have any questions, please make sure to leave them down below in the comment section. Uh, I will see you girls and guys in next video. And if you like this video, please make sure to like, share and subscribe. Once again, you can ask me any questions that you might have and I will try to answer them to the best of my uh, abilities. So once again, stay strong, stay victorious, stay uh, glorious, uh, be positive, don't be negative, and I will see you later on. Take care. Off track story for you guys. So actually when I just began dancing about seven or eight years ago, I only danced for one week and uh, my dance choreographer, teacher, the master uh, of Russian dancing told me, hey Roman, that's it, you should perform with us and you are going to have two solos in the dance. I didn't even know the dance and I didn't even know how to do the, the damn move, right? Uh, so uh, here comes the dance, we dance, uh, middle of the song comes on and I have to do this prisyatka. I do first three prisyatkas very well and I have uh, how many? I have 13 more to go, right? And, and uh, on the fourth and fifth one I literally just uh, fell on my ass, like I fell on my ass once, I fell on my ass second time, third time and then from there on uh, somehow my glutes bounced me back into position and I just finished the prisyatka, but that was, uh, <laughs> that was a great experience. And there was actually another story. Another funny situation we had is uh, we didn't have lots of time to change in between, in between dances. 
uh, we had two back-to-back -back dances, one Russian and one Ukrainian one, so we needed to change very quickly. The guy uh, pretty much... Uh, and then we had a guy that needed to do his uh, prisyatka in, uh, in the second dance. So uh, here comes uh, the time to do the prisyatka. The guy comes out, starts doing the prisyatka. He was a bit overweight, but he was very strong nevertheless. But uh, he had his time off, and so he got a bit fat, right? Or a bit overweight. So he starts doing his prisyatka, and his pants are a bit too tight. So what happens as a result? Uh, his pants start ripping apart, and you can see this uh, magnificent gluteus maximus just uh, sticking out of the red pants while he's doing the prisyatka. Uh, people in the audience just start laughing, uh, uh, <laughs> start laughing, and... Uh, <laughs> It was just hilarious. The saddest part of the situation is that the guy didn't have his underwear for some reason. I don't know why he didn't, but uh, <laughs> that was that was something to remember for a very long time. <laughs> there you go. Art exhibition.